here we have the Claude Burdell 1751 Marseille deck by um, Yves Reynaud 2015 and this is deck looks like 2350 yeah oh 2950 out of 3000 so it's a it's a numbered deck and you can get it from the the tarot the heritage uh, de um, website so it comes with the two cards one in English one in French this deck comes in the really nice um, paper that is a reproduction of what it would look like. So here we have the B and the C, Claude Burdell. So let's take off the wrapper carefully. And it looks like handmade, it looks like rice paper, handmade paper. You can see the, there's the design. Okay. Let's look at the cards. So here's the back. Here they're they don't slide very well. They are they're sharp corners. And let's look at them. And this is the order they came in, so let's look at them. So we have the fool. Here his let's see he's got a bell that's dropped. Cat dog thing. It almost look like afterthought brushwork of blue. Pants is ripped, but you see just that. Magician. Papess, look at the bleed there. It's pretty bad. Even like there, there's the sort of the, the pooling of like wet. Wet pigment. The faces are very pleasing. They don't look too fat. They look like, you know, um, like they're, it's a decent print. This, this one looks like it's just a, the bleed is, is an issue and lack of color in some areas. Almost like a rush job. The Pope. Here we have the gloves, three crosses. We have Cupid that is not blindfolded. Lovers. CB, Claude Burdell. Put his initials there. Epaulets are faces. Justice. Very symmetrical card for the most part. The um, this is what's on the cover. There. Um, very color blocky. This set. And you see here it's bleeding into the name. Wheel of Fortune. La Force. Strength. Le Pendu. Here he, his tongue is not out. Arms are behind him. The unnamed card. Here we have that, the, I call it the ferny foreground. Two heads. We have splotches of red. On the 13th card. Temperance. Diablo. No face there. Tongue sort of sticking out with the, the Gorgon face. 
lack of color there. We have the torch or the baton. There's a smug look on this one's face. This one's kind of looking up. The genitals are a flower, which makes this deck extremely interesting. The, the, the variety of the pieces that are not the same in other Marseille decks. So the flower is covering modesty. There's no genitals. What a prudish deck. But that's... You know, I just noticed that. Here we have crescent moons under the, the nipples. Bat-like wings. The claws. Maison Dieu. So here we have the holy wind or the destruction. Almost like the Tower of Babel. Two figures. Dots. No green dots. Oh, there's a green dot. There's a green dot. Sometimes they sprinkle like three green dots in there, but. L'histoire. There's that little bird. It's, it's a pretty card. The yellow is bleeding into the flesh. Flesh bled into the sky. To be honest, it looks like a three year old colored these. La Lune. Oh, this is very interesting. So here we have the sun. Look at the face of the sun. There's like this wreath around it with hair. We have squared off little rays. That's really different. That is, uh, this deck is significantly different than a lot of them. Here we have these tiny faces with the details of the faces. That is really interesting. Judgment. Le Mans. Her exposed breast, but the swath of fabric covering her. The coop cups. Here, this one's interesting. So this reliquary, we have this fancy pattern there. We have a sun and a bird, like a phoenix, in the middle. This is unusual. Here we have CB, Claude Bordel. We have almost like a heart shape with a fleur-de-lis in it. The dolphin fish, there, there. Three. The coop. Four. Not terribly interesting. Looks like the blue almost didn't take. It looks like just such a rush job. And since this is a historical deck, it's based on a surviving one. Maybe a couple, I don't know. Pretty typical Marseille pips. This is different. The ten. Extremely plain ten card. I mean, it's. You have the nine and the one over top of it, but there's the flower motif. Valet de Coupe. There's some ribbons in the hair. Different. Cahier de Coupe. The knight. On a bluish horse. Queen with the covered cup. And there's like a, a covering over her. Rouge de Coupe. It's almost like he's on a, like a boogie board, surfboard thing. It's very strange. It almost looks Asian. Oh, we have the sword. Very fancy. Look, this extra ornament there. This is really long. We have the flowers up there. We have a, the, cl 
cloud. It, this one, there's a lot has been added to this one. So we're going through swords. So this is strange, the sword, this is the order in which I got the deck. The swords are here. I always think it's interesting why, which suit goes before which suit? Is it just a production thing? Is it random per deck? Does it have, is there a meaning? I don't know. And these cars are not terribly reflective. You can see just a little bit. Sean, the thickness is, is his, the use Reno cards, the thickness, the card stock they're on is impeccable. It really is substantial. I mean, it is truly cardstock, but cardstock with some significant weight to it. That's why I have nine of the decks. <laughs> yeah, it's just the blue scratchiness. the odd sword in the middle, except for 10, which is the two crossed. Valet des Despier. These do not have the ferny uh, foreground that so many other Marseille decks do. Look at this one, it's bleeding over in the hooves. Like the, either they're muddy or, you know, the poor color bleed. Face nipple. Look at that, that's peach colored. The face is white. So they chose to leave the face as white. The queen. Big blocks of blue. The king. This is the fancy king, of course. He's got the fanciness there, he's got the little swirl there. In the Perrin deck, there was no fancy king. The sword's always a fancy king. So here we have the coins, fleur de lis, in there. And here we have the 1751 Claude Burdel Cartier et Graveur. So card and engraver. Interesting flourishes, these little dots there. It's very different. Fleur de lis, very fancy. Card. Extremely fancy card. This one pushes the boundaries of almost like Rococo design. The, the crown. There's a crown there. Very fancy. A lot going on. Extremely, it's a, it's a beautiful Marseille card. Even this with the spattering of the blue. This almost looks like a some avant-garde painting. But I appreciate the yellow, the blue, and the red together so closely. It really makes it very colorful. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, they're even going outside the, the borders. It's like all this flourish embellishment going crazy. Look, look at the, the offset of this. Not very good. The blue looks like almost in this print it was very liquidy. It didn't quite hit its mark when it was being um, put to press. All the coins are the same. They have this sort of roughly with the three fleur de lis in the middle. Unlike when it's like denarii, it's the you know Roman emperors, Roman um, Roman leaders, and here. It's on the side, just like it is in other Marseille, but it didn't, uh, didn't you? <laughs> Those little red heels on his shoes. The knight. There's the blue. You can see it's like a very watercolory blue. Blue typically was very expensive because it was made with lapis lazuli. Or just lapis. I don't know if this was made with that, but I know with oil pigments, they were usually extremely expensive. That's why they were reserved for like 
religious paintings of Mary with the blue, the virgin blue, um, because of the lapis. It almost looks like there's two, two different versions of blue in these cards. We have this pale, liquidy blue and this bold blue, which could very well be. There's some spatter there, which could very, very well be two were used. I mean, obviously, they almost, they're two different colors. The hues are, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. Here we have the baton. This is the last suit. Look at all this extra stuff. It's very extra. You just went crazy. Let's add flourishes. And these are typical. Nothing too crazy. There are some knobby things there which have been added. Gives them some something else, something different. There's that blue spatter again. Liquidy. Here we have the flowers. This card, for some reason, looks very modern. I don't know, maybe just the color. This one, too. Seven. Eight. The reds are becoming very orange. Nine. Ten. We've got this fancy stuff there. Here we have the page, the valet. The knight. The horse is completely covered with fabric. Queen and the king. Here he has on his baton a point. The legs are spread on the um, throne. And that is that. That is the deck. So let's see. I'm going to put this back in its little wrapper. Let's see how well I can do that. I don't want to mess up the folds. Let's see. It was. I think this was first. This goes, this goes there, this goes on top, those tuck in, it's just like a little nice little package, there. And this is, this is how they would come, you would buy the cards like this in the paper, and um, I know in, here in Virginia, in Colonial Williamsburg, they sell actual card sets in the paper um, as part of the, uh, you know, how it, how the cards were. Let's see if we can get it back in the box. There it goes. Just fits just so. It does not rattle, but it's a beautiful presentation. So that is the Claude Burdell 1751 Marseille deck. And there's the Claude Burdell mark. There, so I have twenty. This is twenty nine fifty. Um, there, there's the box. So I have. Uh, yesterday, I was able to obtain for a decent price the Grombolin Tarot, which is out of print. I am very excited about that. It's the. Um, um, it's not the nicest deck in the beautiful gold paper box. It's the the one down because the most expensive one came in like this gold black lattice work box, but I got the one in the black box with the red velour. Um, there's really no difference except for the box and the price. So if you pay to pay one third of the price, you don't get the fancy, fancy box, but I was able to get it. It's coming from Spain, so it might take a few weeks, but as soon as I get it, I'm so excited because it's really an interesting deck. I did not know it, but it was actually featured in American Horror Story Coven, and I watched that whole season, and I did not see it. I don't, or I don't remember it. But the deck looks very interesting. I am very excited to get it. Um, yeah, I also pre-ordered the. Um, there's a deck that's coming out. Um, that is, um, it's coming out of England. Uh, I think in the fall. It's the. 
I saw it on Amazon, but I actually went to the um, like the Kickstarter page and I um, picked it up from that page. And there's different, of course, there's different levels. I can get a signed. I just got the base, um, the base copy that's not signed, but it does come with a book. It is the. Let me look at my tarot lists. There's really not too many tarot decks coming out that I'm excited about. It is called the Splendor Solace Tarot, Inner Alchemies of Mithraic Light by Marie Angelo. Um, it says it's $39.95 on um, Amazon. I don't think it comes with the book but it's not even out yet um, on um, Amazon it says ships within one to three months it says August 7th through September 16th so um, and if you buy both the book and the set it's 61 69 which is about about what what you would pay if you went to her site but I did a search for it because I'm, I wanted to know when it came out well comes out this fall so I'm excited it reminds me very much of the um, uh, another collage deck that uses alchemical um, the one I have it's the um, holy light tarot of the holy light that deck is very interesting with so much to look at but anyway um, enough of that that's the Burdell um, deck by Yuzu Reno